By the year 2040, Earth's skyrocketing population would need a lot of energy for lighting our homes, for fueling automobiles, or even cloud computing. So we came up with photovoltaic cells, hydropower, and nuclear power plants. Finally, it dawned on us: the sun. Using the sun's actual energy may be really difficult. So we came up with a star in a bottle. Yes, nuclear fusion. The sun is a giant ball of gas, which mostly consists of hydrogen. Due to the heat, the hydrogen atoms split, creating plasma, where the nuclei and electrons bounce around randomly. As nucleons are positive, they repel each other instead of fusing, and to overcome this repulsion, they have to collide in high velocities. The sun manages this thermonuclear reaction thanks to its enormous mass, which leads to tremendous pressure and incredibly high temperatures inside its core, just enough to squeeze the nuclei together until they fuse to release energy. This is the energy we want to harvest from a fusion reactor. Now, let's move on to an earth-based fusion reaction. Most fusion reactions involve the isotopes of hydrogen called deuterium, which is abundant in seawater, and tritium, which in simple terms is limited addition, which is why we artificially manufacture tritium from lithium. Anyhow, deuterium reacts with tritium to form a helium-3 ion in a high-energy neutron particle. There are many ways to extract this energy on Earth. One of them is by using magnetic confinement or simply baking. First, we whip up a mixture of deuterium and tritium. Then, we place it in a toroid or a donut-shaped oven and set it to about 100 million degrees by using high-frequency electromagnetic waves to create plasma. Our goal is to achieve fusion, so the particles have to be in close proximity, which is why we use superconducting magnets. Then we wait for about one millionth of a second, and voila, we have helium and neutrons. The energy released is carried by the neutral neutrons. The neutrons are drawn in by the lithium blankets to make more tritium, and the energy is absorbed by the walls. Mind you, they get really hot. Now the water circulating in the walls absorbs this energy, and the steam produced can power up turbines, alternators, etc. And in short, electricity. All of this aside, why use fusion? Well. Its major byproduct is helium, which is a non-toxic inert gas. And even if the confinement fails, the plasma would expand and cool. Moreover, we can replace the energy produced by a barrel of oil with a glass of seawater. And for the best part, it would be affordable. Too good to be true. Yet it isn't here. Put simply, it's a threat to the existing energy industry. Thus, it's underfunded. On top of that, maintaining a million degrees ain't easy. We're not failing. We've successfully found a thousand things that won't work. Now it's time to make it work. Because if we're serious about climate change, we should get serious about fusion energy.